good practice this week. Uh, Health-wise, uh, we're sitting about in the same place that we were before, like we discussed the other day. You know, Alex looks fairly well, but cannot guarantee that he will play. Uh, Happel will be a no-go for sure. I think I mentioned that before. Aside from that, I feel good about Dante Manning. He moved around really well out there. Um, the rest of the guys looked look good. So, questions? Damon's been able to go back. I'm not even sure if he traveled last week. David. Yeah. Yes, sir. But with Happel down, uh-huh. do you think that he'll that this freshman will get a shot this week? He's Just a really good player. He's a really good player. He's learned the system. I think he missed such a critical part of camp and then post camp that he is catching up, and we feel he's caught up now. So you'll see him play. He already was activated on special teams. Um, there's also, you know, we, we feel like a lot of guys have developed really well. You know, we feel like Brian Addison is developing. We feel like, you know, Triquez, Dante Manning, they have such good battles going that we could also now work those guys at different spots to keep providing depth, you know, as it's been the kind of year it's been so that we're prepared for anything that comes our way. So, so, so those guys are candidates to play that nickel spot in place of Jordan? All, all those guys are candidates to play. You know, Verone's played it as well. You know, we don't want to tip our hand this early in the week. But uh, we feel really good about, you know, nickel and our dime packages going into the game. Base personnel, of course, is what it is. How's Alex just been handling it mentally, the, the back and forth? I know, you know, back injuries are kind of finicky and tricky to deal with. How has he just kind of been handling it the last couple of weeks when he's, he seems so close and then he has maybe a setback here or there? Yeah, yeah, well, he's, you know, he's frustrated, but he's handled it really well. Um, you know him, he's a competitor. I mean, the guy, they're not going to outwork him. And to be that close and to have a setback, that was really disappointing for him. But he also takes that and turns it into positive energy to work hard to get back. And he's, I mean, he's really, really close. We just want to be able to be back and healthy. We don't want him to be out there trying to do something that might hurt him or hurt himself in the process. So just, to, he's a stud, you know. Has it been good just to see how many of your rotation guys have stepped up in that position, you know, whether that be Dawson, Ryan, some of these other guys where you can have the benefit to maybe slow play him and be absolutely sure because you know that you've got that depth there? Yeah, well, I mean, the way we practice and the way we've played games, we've, we've postured ourselves to be able to handle that. Just, uh, you know, don't want to handle much more. Of We will if it comes our way, but we'd like to, you know, we'd like to have him back and we'd like to get – in the groove that we have been when the five guys play together. Now, credit to these guys on Saturday. You know, they were with, I was mixing and matching, and a lot of it was on, on the spot. So, uh, but either way, I, you know, those guys aren't going to flinch. I mean, Coach Murrowball's got those guys wired to the point where whatever comes, they're going to handle. The, the defense have one of its uh, stronger performances from a pass rush perspective against UCLA. Uh, earlier this season, you talked about wanting to get more knockback. How do you feel the, the defensive line has progressed for you guys this year? That was, yeah, it was our best game. I think what people don't take into account, they had 91 offensive snaps, you know, and I think we limited their run game to about two and a half a carry. You know, they were known for rushing for six yards a carry, and I know there was a lot of chatter about how, you know, there was a lot of how great they were doing, and so credit to our defense for coming out, and from a physical standpoint, taking it to the opponent at the line of scrimmage. The front seven really did a great job knocking people back, striking with their hands, setting blockers, setting the point, and, um, you know, against a really good team. So it's, it's, it's really good progress. We need to take another step, uh, especially as our, our young linebackers are fitting into these roles. It's so important for them to have defined gaps to fit, right? You imagine being a guy like Jeffrey Bassa, Keith Brown, you know, all these guys that are playing, you know, Jabril McNeil, um, and if those gaps are moved and guys are bounced around, that's difficult, right, with all that stuff coming at you. So the fact that they're playing so much better has really helped us out, and you know, and they know that we're going to keep and put more on them to play harder, to play more physical up front. Because to achieve what we want to achieve, we got to be better at the line of scrimmage across the board. Dorlis and Popo are two guys that play positions that don't get a lot of statistics. Um, can you speak though, just how important they've been for stopping the run and creating those gaps, and just your development you've seen between those two guys? You know, statistically, how we grade, it's it's really high. Real high productivity uh, for what they want to do for a career, excellent as well. Yeah, they they've changed their bodies in the off season, right? They've they've changed the way that they move, the way that they bend, the way they come out of their hips. They've developed explosive power, and they've matched it with a lot of upper body strength enhancement as well. So when they put their hands on you, those are heavy handed guys that can control blockers, and a lot of times again double teamed. I mean that's that's a different world now. You know that's there's. There's no, you know, cupcakes and milk there inside there. They, it's every it's go time, and they handle it really well. They've played banged up. They played when they're healthy. They push through plays, and 
they know we're going to push them even more because that's what our team needs for us to be successful. I was watching the UCLA game again, and just just the sheer size of your guys' defensive line compared to theirs, and just what have you thought of the maturation of that group? Just from three or four years ago, it has been like it. Just feels like you guys are just bigger, faster, stronger. It's getting better, you know. It's getting better. We're not where we need to be yet, you know. We know, you know. There's a certain vision that we have. I know everybody wants to get there yesterday, but you have to recruit a certain way, you have to train a certain way, you have to develop a certain way, you have to eat a certain way. That's the fun part, right? But uh, we're, we're gaining a lot of ground. We are, and it's showing up. It's really starting to show up. So put on the gas and you know, let's keep getting better and let's see, uh, let's see how far we can take it. Coach, did you ever get an answer on the delay of game if it's a snap count? What is the rule on that? The delay of game and if it was a snap count, is that what it was that they were? Yeah, into the first yeah, half. It was at our, uh, that, you know, we, we were moving our people up front and we have line calls that go with it. And when we made that call, we were accused of trying to get the offense to jump off sides. Uh, to this day, I haven't understood that or have gotten a clear explanation on that. So I wish I had uh, better information. As soon as I get it, I'll get that to you. So you can make the calls. It's just they're saying that you were doing it in a way that was. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what to say. I mean, I have a, you know, Cuban accent that slips every now and then. Our linebacker has a little bit of an, you know, maybe we just have to just abide by exactly how the officials want us to do that. The the issue of disconcerting signals though has come up more in college football, not just here. It's been everywhere. Mm -hmm. Obviously, when the offense, you're just not supposed to do what the offense is doing. So if they're clapping, you call. If they call, you clap. I, I get it. That's true. But this is still college football, so instilling to young guys to be aware of that. What is that coaching process like when this has become a bigger issue the last two, three years? It's just go right by the book. You got the rule book, sit down, show them examples, tell them what's what you can do, what you can't do, and expect nothing but that. I mean, at the end of the day, we do play a game and it's physical and it's intense, but there are rules. And to be successful, you have to play by the rules and we're always gonna do our best to make sure that we follow them. What's the progression been like behind Anthony at quarterback? Ty and Jay and Robbie, and has there been any separation between any of those three to, to be the two? Yeah, Ty has been a little bit ahead of Jay, but Jay's right there as well because Jay's a really good player, but it's been mostly those two guys. Robbie is developing, but he is behind those guys. Where's the progression been, though? Anything in particular that stands out? Just for the three of them? Any, progression in yeah, terms of in how terms they're of doing? How they're, yeah, they're improving or whatnot. They're, they're really good players. They're progressing, you know, and we're playing them as we feel that is the very best thing for our team and gives us the best chance to win. Jeffrey Bossa has really stepped up in that linebacker position, especially given that that was not the position that he was, you know, originally recruited to play. Is that something that, that where you look at even when these linebackers come back, that is something that is in the mix for him, you know, positionally going forward, maybe not just toward the end of the season, but afterward as well? No, you know, he, uh, and that's something we've, we've tried to make clear from the beginning so that no one has any misconceptions. He was unselfishly um, volunteered himself to help the football team, knowing that at the end of the season that he'll have the opportunity to go back to safety, which is a position that he wants to play and that he came here to play. So I think the fact that he's getting the understanding of, you know, he understands the pass game, has always understood it really well. He's getting a crash course like PhD in run fits and how everything ties in together. This is going to be invaluable for his development as a safety. So to answer your question, he will be back at safety after the season. Between the injuries on the offensive line and Kingsley's decision, just what is that number two unit, what does that look like right now? Well, we're a little bit banged up, you know, and we're a little bit thin, but it's uh, it's not much different minus one of what we had before. So I'm sure you guys could piece it together with the guys that I've been playing, the guys that we have put in the two deep, so we just got to subtract one from that. Is Jalen then the fourth tackle outside of oh, Jordan? Oh, I'm going to get into <laughs> who exactly is where. You know that. You know, we got our guys, they're repping. We feel very strongly about the way they're developing and the fact that we could put them in there and they'll be successful. Is the door open for him to come back if he wants to? I know when you go into the portal, you can, you've seen players come back, or is it a closed shut? He's the best way to put that is that, you know, we don't, I don't judge. I really don't. I don't judge. It's like you respect people and you expect to be respected back, and that's what transpires, you know? And we work really hard with everybody to develop and to have the best possible experience, development cycle, all that kind of stuff. So. We don't judge, we just adjust and we move forward. So like also, is Jaden Navert back in practice at this he point? He is, he is, and actually did a really nice job working more on special teams now, um, and eventually looking to get him on some of our third down stuff as he learns, as he relearns the system. You know, he's a really talented guy. You know, he's had a few injuries, you know, since he's been here as well. 
But um, again, pretty excited to have him back there. He was working with the scout team predominantly and then worked with some special teams units uh, the past couple of days. We, we had talked after, after the Ohio State game about how you guys prepare for Stony Brook would go a long way in determining if you were a good team or a great team. Now that you guys pass the test like UCLA, is it kind of a similar deal since so much is still ahead of you? I think what's obvious to us, I'm sure, I mean, you really can't deny it. It's like right between the eyes, you know. We're a good football team when we play every single rep like it's the fourth quarter. And to do that, you got to practice every single rep as if it's the fourth quarter. Anything not up to that level, you're, you're saying you're willing to give away a W. That's the best way to put it, and that's the way it's been postured to the team because that's honest, that's truthful, and I don't think anybody is good enough. Nowadays in college football, you see every single week there are upsets galore, right? No one's good enough to do anything but their absolute best in preparation leading up to the game and then playing through the game. So uh, we've taken that approach. The leadership Council's done a great job enforcing that, and, um, you know, you know the old saying, man, some people learn by through consequence and some people don't learn, you know, we, we, we've learned that when we're not at our best, we can suffer, suffer a massive consequence. And um, we feel like going forward, we're in a better place.